Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett looked back at the past year and ahead to 2023 during his annual State of the Township address. With Easter right around the corner, local families enjoyed an egg hunt and photo ops at the Orion Center during Bunny Bop. Lake Orion Lions Club members enjoyed a day at the races as one of their biggest fundraisers of the year returned to Boulder Point Golf Club. And the Chamber of Commerce helped celebrate the grand opening of the area's newest marijuana dispensary with the ribbon cutting ceremony. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. As Orion Township emerges from the COVID years, the community seems to be thriving as new developments, new businesses, and plenty of awards come to the area. Recently, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett took a look back at the past year and suggested that the best is yet to come. On the morning of Wednesday, March 22nd, the Township Supervisor hosted his 10th State of the Township Address at Woodside Bible Church. Having fun with a Monopoly theme, Barnett recapped all the ways the community is winning thanks to the residents, schools, businesses, and partnerships that make Orion Township unique. And I want to start with my favorite slide every year. If you've been to this presentation, you probably know what I'm talking about. And this is the Frugal Index. And these are actually screen grabs from the last five years of this presentation. And the reason that slide repeats every year is because what it says, if you look at that, it says we provide services more efficiently and less costly to our residents than any of our neighbors, year after year after year. Of course, the biggest news from the past year was GM's announcement of a $4 billion investment in the Orion Assembly Plant, including upgrades as they prepare for production on the electric Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra. But this is the big one. This is the largest investment announcement in the history of our community and the history of our county. And I'm talking about GM, their historic $4 billion investment right here in Orion at our assembly plant. Well, they will be making this beautiful, amazing electric Silverado. Next year, 2024, they will be rolling off the line. And my favorite part about this is where it's made right here in Orion. You might remember last year we designed this logo as part of the uh, presentation. I spent a lot of time in the plant working with them, and the number one thing we've, oh, we've told uh, GM CEO Mary Barra and the rest of the GM team is, we won't let you down. That is what we mailed the card, the giant card signed by all of our employees uh, to Mary Barra. In addition to looking back over the past year, Burnett talked about what residents can look forward to in 2023 and beyond. Uh, and there are more parks improvements coming and investments to Friendship Park. Sand volleyball courts coming to Civic Center Park, right where Township Hall used to sit. A major pavilion re renovation and beach expansion at one of our hidden gems, Camp Agawam. My sister tells me to stop talking about it because it's her own private beach. We're also bringing a handicap uh, accessible kayak launch uh, to Camp Agawam as well this year. We're super excited about that. And over at the Orient Center, more than a decade in the making, an event deck. Uh, but great news, Chelsea, Chelsea's here, I saw her, Chelsea. There's Chelsea, she will not raise her hand, but people are pointing at her. She applied and we were awarded a community chess card for $250,000 and we will build that deck. So I know those of you that use that space are excited to see that. Burnett wound down his presentation by talking about the community's heart touching on the Forgotten Harvest program started during the pandemic, Woodside's Village Pantry, and the formation of the Orion Community Foundation, promising more information this spring. The Orion Community Foundation has been a dream of mine for several years, as many other communities around us have community foundations. Uh, the OCF will be a nonprofit serving the needs of the Orion community and is being started this year, any day now, with an initial donation of $50,000. So, Super excited about this. We will continue to serve our residents and show that we have the most heart. You can view the State of the Township Address in its entirety right here at ONTV, or you can view it on demand on our YouTube channel. One week earlier, Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter hosted his annual State of the County Address in West Bloomfield Township. 
On the evening of Tuesday, March 14th, Culture addressed the audience at the Berman Center for the Performing Arts with a focus on community, respect, inclusion, and gratitude. During his presentation, he announced a mini-grant program for younger residents and mental health urgent care. Supporting our students, addressing both physical and mental health, providing excellent services to our most vulnerable, extending our fiscal stewardship, and improving our quality of life. This is what calls us to service. Service that begins with living our values Community, respect, inclusion, and gratitude. These are the foundational values that I've tried to share with you tonight. Community, remembering the power of community as safe and supportive places that allow us to build a life and to prosper. Respect, demonstrating through our actions respect for ourselves, for those who have come before us, and yes, for those with whom we may disagree. Inclusion, taking a step to ensure that all people are not just included, but actually feel like they belong here. And finally, gratitude. You know, it's a value many of us don't take the time to practice. Identifying each day those things, big and small, that we are grateful for. I just happen to believe that when your mind is focused on gratitude, when you hold it in your heart, I believe you have no room for negativity. To view the presentation in its entirety, you can visit oakgov.com or you can find it on YouTube. In May of 2022, Lake Orion welcomed the community's first marijuana dispensary as Live Cannabis opened their doors near the village. Almost one year later, a second dispensary has opened and this time near Orion Township's southern border. On Friday, March 24th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce gathered at Lake Orion's newest marijuana dispensary, Joyology, located off of M24 near Dutton Road, to celebrate their official grain opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. One, two, three. I feel honored that actually it's something I can do without the stigma, without people looking down and frown upon. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's sad that it was once illegal, um, and now that more and more communities are opting in, it's bringing in more tax revenue. Uh, we have a location in Centerline. Uh, Centerline just spent half a million dollars in tax revenue in the last, uh, for last year's sales. And I can only imagine what Orion's gonna do next year and the years moving forward, just because the community's great. Uh, they're loyal, they're loyal people here. Um, and honestly, it's a great atmosphere, great vibes. Visitors enjoyed music, giveaways, a food truck, and there was even a glass blowing demonstration just outside the entrance. Joyology offers a wide variety of products to everyone from recreational users to those seeking pain relief. We offer everything. So cannabis, even though it's been around forever, it's very new as far as like different items. Before we used to just smoke weed, now there's edibles, there's tinctures, topicals. They even have frozen dried fruit that are, you know, infused. So now we can have healthy snacks, not just, you know, sugary snacks or whatnot. But it's endless opportunity for the consumer to actually be able to find something that fits their needs because not everybody wants to get high and not everybody needs creams and not everybody eats edibles. So it's like whatever you could think of, we, we have that here. In 2018, the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act was passed with 56% of the vote legalizing marijuana for recreational use. State license sales began in December of 2019. First of all, it's legal in the state of Michigan, uh, and uh, th these groups that we've uh, attracted here are some of the best in the business, so we're really excited about that aspect of it. But um, how it benefits our community is, uh, there are lots of ways. Uh, they're, they're employing tons of people here. They're supporting the growth facilities that exist in our community. Uh, and the unique thing about how we, where we situated these in our community is we didn't have them on the main roads. Like we had a very strict ordinance, they had to be in industrial park zoning, which this is where we sit today. Um, but the, even beyond that, one of the things we put in our ordinance is they have to contribute. They already are going to go above and beyond, they've already done that here. But um, each facility will contribute $50,000 a year to the Oregon Community Foundation that we can use for all kinds of charitable work in the community. For more information, you can visit joyologyorion.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram as Joyology Lake Orion. 
The Lake Orion Lions Club depends on the community to help them continue their charitable efforts in the Orion area. Thanks to sponsors and an enthusiastic crowd, the Lions Club once again hosted one of their biggest fundraisers of the year. On the evening of Saturday, March 25th, the Lake Orion Lions Club hosted the seventh running of the Lions races at Boulder Point Golf Club in Oxford. Attendees enjoyed a taco bar and took part in raffles, but the highlight of the evening was the Lions races. 24 wooden lions were decorated by local businesses and community organizations and were lined up six at a time. Large fuzzy dice determined which lions would advance and attendees would bet on the outcome. As a matter of fact, our own ONTV TV Lion won the second race of the night. Just a big fundraiser, everybody comes in. Um, we have giant dice, giant purple fuzzy dice to roll them. Uh, different lanes, the lions will move forward and we bet on which one's gonna make it to the 10th spot first. The atmosphere is uh, really exciting. This is our tech second year back after COVID and uh, just everybody seems to be pretty excited to be here. Uh, vote on their lions, eventually bet on their lions be part of the raffles and uh, enjoying the food. So it's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm tonight. The first Lions races took place in 2015 at the Knights of Columbus Hall on Orion Road. The COVID pandemic put the fundraiser on hold for two years before the event returned in 2022 at Boulder Point. Proceeds raised from the fun night out helps the Lions Club support Leader Dogs for the Blind, their annual Christmas basket program and other charitable causes. As far as the money we raised till tonight will go towards our Christmas basket program, also go towards robotics, middle school and high school robotics, the scholarship program this spring. We're going to give scholarships to four Lake Orion High School uh, kids and um, any of the other type of community needs that, that, that come across our way. For more information on the Lake Orion Lions and their upcoming community events, visit LakeOrionLions.org. Easter falls on Sunday, April 9th this year, and there is no shortage of fun Easter-themed events taking place in the community. On the morning of Saturday, March 18th, Orion Township's Parks and Rec hosted its annual Bunny Bop event at the Orion Center. Families were asked to pre-register for the event, which was divided into three sessions with 50 kids and family members per session. Uh, at check-in, they uh, got a craft kit so that they could take those crafts home to work on um, some cute little activities for them to do. The, we had the Easter Bunny downstairs. He um, was on a full belly. He was in a really good mood. He got to meet with all of the kids. And then we all also had um, a new person to our event. Her name is Alicia. And she's a bubbleologist. And she did some bubble magic with the kids, which is a great addition to the program. Oh, yeah, and of course we had the Acon. Due to snow and windy conditions, the first egg hunt of the day was moved inside the Orient Center, although the kids didn't seem to mind. The second and third egg hunts took place outdoors, just like the Easter Bunny intended. The Bunny Bop was created in 2010 and originally took place at Friendship Park. In 2012, it moved to the Senior Center, which is now the Lake Orient Village offices. In 2013, the event was moved to the Orient Center, where it has taken place since. Well, with the exception of the COVID impacted years. The bunny bop in the first day of spring on March 20th reminds us that the worst of winter just may be behind us. It means spring isn't too far away and right around the corner is uh, spring break, which is why we're doing this event so early. A lot of families head uh, to different directions, see different families spread out a little bit. So we do this a little bit early to make sure that all families have an opportunity to celebrate spring and come do our egg hunt. If you're looking for other Easter events, Canterbury Village continues their extravaganza on Friday, April 7th and Saturday, April 8th from noon to 5 p.m. The Easter Bunny will drop eggs from a helicopter and kids are encouraged to collect the eggs, which can be redeemed at the shops for prizes. Visit CanterburyVillage.com. For more information, and also the Lake Orient American Legion is hosting an Easter egg hunt at Children's Park on Saturday, April 8th, beginning at 11 a.m. sharp. The event is geared toward children 10 years of age or younger. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Have a happy Easter, Lake Warrior.